This is Jordan Oliver, and you're listening to Vibe 105. This is Vibe Talks, exclusively on Vibe 105. Hey everybody, this is John Carlo Alino reporting for Vibe 105 with a Vibe Talk segment and I'm happy to be joined by my guest today who's uh, set to make his Bellator MMA debut. He is a decorated amateur wrestler. He is a former national champion. He is Jordan Oliver. How you doing, Jordan? I am good. I am good. I appreciate the time. And Jordan, this is a big debut now. You're transitioning to MMA uh first like before we get into the your debut and your opponent like what factored into this decision to uh want to get into mma at this stage um you know wrestling for oklahoma state getting to watch you know a guy named daniel cormier go through this process when he was chasing olympic titles at oklahoma state and then made his transfer into mma was uh you know you could say that was a big inspiration uh, of mine, but also, you know, just watching all of the wrestlers that were making the transfer over. And this is something that I've always thought about, but always wanted to do. Um, and now the opportunity has arose and, uh, I have, uh, the chance to not only, you know, perform, but also become an MMA world champion. Uh, I'm more than excited for the opportunity and, uh, the run to put on a show for not only the Bellator fans, but fans in general and in MMA, in MMA world. And was this something that you were thinking of? Like, I know like age also comes into uh, the equation here. Like, was this something you were thinking of sooner or do you feel like this allowed you to be more prepared and uh, just be this better version of yourself now? Um, I think I thought about it sooner. Uh, 2016 was when the, you know, the opportunity really arose, right? I was, there was guys I was actually training with, living with Tyrell Fortune, Ed Ruth. We were all in Arizona State at the time. Um, and also my buddy Aaron Pico had made the transfer in 2016 as well. So it was something that, you know, I had interest in and was looking to make, excuse me, the transfer in 2016. Uh, but me knowing myself and the competitor I am, I invested so much into wrestling um you know one of my goals were making an olympic team and, and to chase down an olympic goal uh, so with that said i i couldn't leave the sport of wrestling until you know I, I i completed some of my my goals that i wanted to be done in wrestling and i had invested 20 27 years of my life into wrestling right so um after making an olympic team and and you know the opportunity arises again and me feeling comfortable where I'm at, uh, I believe now is the time for me to become an MMA world champion. That's great. And like even this uh, MMA career now, your first taste of like just the MMA training camp, getting ready for a fight. Was there anything about this process that surprised you? Uh, I mean, not really. You know, this is almost like wrestling. Uh, and you have camp segments, right? Where you go camp starts and you're 10 weeks out but as any high level athlete uh whether it's wrestling baseball football you name it it got to be a lifestyle right you got to be living the lifestyle whether even if you're at a camp quote unquote you still want to be eating and doing the right things uh because you know the little decisions winning every day plays big 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 part and big dividends in the room and when you're starting to train um uh, so not too many surprises. Uh, you know, I was surprised where they're like, hey, the last week we're going to kind of take it down. That's going to be your light week. You know, in wrestling, we're, you know, we almost have the mentality, hey, we're going to train through it. We're going to, we're strong. We're strong enough and we're going to train through this. We're not resting. There's no really resting. And there's a little bit of it, but um, this process is very, very close to wrestling. You know, and you have the, the weight cuts and, and, and very uh, polishing the details of, you know, your striking, your jujitsu uh, and really game planning on what you're going to do. Right. It's very, very similar to wrestling. Um, surprisingly, you know, it's, it's, I don't know if it's cause it's all new crafts, but it has kept me, you know, engaged the whole time. You know, sometimes, 
you know, two, three, two workouts, three workouts a day is can be taxing. But when you're learning all of these new crafts and obviously you're preparing for a fight, um, it's very interesting just to, to go through it, but you know, it, to be the best mixed martial artist, I got to be the best in jujitsu. I got to be the best in my striking. I got to be the best in wrestling. So, um, you know, continuing to wrestle because that's what I'm best at. Uh, and it builds such a great base for fighting. Uh, but also submerging myself into all the other aspects that I need to learn and, and, you know, gain ground on to put myself in position to win a world title, but too much, not, not too different of a process, right? If you think about it, you just really want to keep continuing to get better. Even for me now, we're 12 days out, 11 days out, and I'm still worried about how I'm going to get better later today at my kickboxing practice. And, you know, how can I maximize my recovery after that to get the best sleep? And then when tomorrow comes, we'll worry about tomorrow. But, you know, winning these little decisions and making the right decisions every day and punting full, you know, max effort, uh, I think is going to over prepare me and put me in position to get the results that I want come August 11th. And just uh, speaking on that debut, August 11th, like your opponent, there's obviously not so much tape on him to prepare for. So does it make it, I want to say easier in a way, but does it help you? a lot better prepare that you're just focusing on developing yourself rather than like, you know, preoccupying all your thoughts like, Oh, I got to make sure I'm uh, aware of that. He's going to do this, or he's going to be in this exchange, do something else. Like, does it help you knowing that he only has one fight under his belt too? Um, I mean, it, it, I guess it just depends on the athlete you are. I know athletes and, and well, I'll just say athletes, but I know fighters and wrestlers that like to do video. I like to do video in the aspect of, hey, this is what he's good at. Be aware of this, but not so much of, hey, we got to stop him here. We got to do this. We got to do this. Because once you start getting into that mindset, it kind of takes over what you're thinking that you need to do, right? What do you need to execute to win, to be successful and make this guy worry about defending you, right? And that comes from wrestling, right? If, if I'm attacking the other guy's defending. Same thing goes for MMA. I think, uh, and just mindset wise, I don't always have to be attacking, but I don't want to have the mindset of, oh, let me watch out for this. Let me watch out for this. Or more so, man, let me make this guy feel me and react to what I need to do. And what are my keys of success to, to win this fight? Um, so with that being said, it's almost better that I have less video because I don't, I'm not a big video guy in general, but at the end of the day, you know, and a lot of athletes say this, it's you versus you. It's always going to be you versus you. And I get it. It's MMA and, and I got to fight somebody else. But as long as I'm holding myself accountable and, and being the best version and, and focusing on what I need to do and be the best, I leave it up to my coaches. Right. And I have the best coaching in the world. These guys will make sure I'm prepared and they know what, what to be aware of. Uh, and they'll do their due diligence to to make sure that I'm aware of it and just focus on, you know, what I do best and smashing somebody and, and getting a, a win for my debut. Yeah, definitely going to be uh, keeping an eye on that. And uh, just transition a little bit because uh, this is a time of year uh, where student athletes getting ready, uh, for their journey and, uh, setting their goals in their respective sports and, uh, vibe one Oh five here. We're based on, uh, York university campus here in Toronto, Canada. So I just want to get your thoughts. Cause you were on this journey too, when you were at Oklahoma state university, what was that whole experience like for you being a student athlete and, uh, just the whole grind of, uh, athletics and then, uh, being a student as well. Um, I think it was, uh, it's definitely an experience, right? It, it prepares you to, well, the first time you're away from your parents, right? And you get to make decisions on your own, whether that's getting up and going to class, getting your butt to work out. Well, usually the coaches will let you know, hey, you better get your butt to work out, right? But going to class and making all those decisions by yourself, um, you know, it almost 
gives you a sense of, you know, um, I don't want to say growing up, but also like you have ownership of your life and, and what you're doing. So, um, you know, there's two ways you can, you can make wrong decisions and the ownership of your life can go the wrong way, or you can make the right decisions, right? Whether that's going to class, doing your homework, going to bed on time. Um, I think that was the biggest, the biggest, uh, you know, learning curve of my life, but it was the best just because, you know, you, you start holding yourself to, you know, standards and a level to, you know, mom can't be here. Dad can't be here. Nobody's watching over me. Uh, so at the end of the day, the choices you make, uh, other people have repercussions, but they're your repercussions. Um, so I think it's just, you know, enjoy it. Sometimes it can become overwhelming as a student athlete, but it, literally almost like the steps I'm saying, you know, take it day by day but, and, and make the right decisions. And, you know, after one day and two, three, you know, it might not be a week. It might be two weeks, three weeks, but you get to a month of making the right decisions and doing the right things. You know, even after 10 days, they become habit. You don't think about it. And then all of a sudden you start reaping these benefits. And that's only after a month, right? You continue to do those things for two months, three months, one year. Uh, and you start progressing and evolving not only yourself as a student athlete, but as a person and even as an athlete, you know, individually, um, these things, you know, give you confidence to be the person that you want to be, but also, you know, push you to challenge yourself and do the things that you need to be to, you know, become that person that you want to be later in life, whether that's, you know, a doctor, whether that's an athlete, whether that's a parent, you know, it, whatever it might be, but, you know, at those times being a student athlete, sometimes you can get lost. You know, you don't have supervision and I'm not saying don't have fun. I'm just saying, make sure you make the right decisions and take care of what you need to take care of and make the right decisions day in, day out. And hard work does pay off, right? But enjoy the process because it is one of the one things that is really going to get you prepared for life. And it's not even on the life scale yet. Right? You got to handle classes, counselors, workouts, being able to fit in your 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 times to eat, recover. But also now you got to fit in friends and, oh, guess what? This person has this going on, this going on. So it's a good, good way to, you know, prioritize things for yourself, build confidence in yourself, but also, you know, hold yourself accountable and, and do the right things that you need to do. Great advice. And uh, just a couple final questions here. Uh, there's been an ongoing like talk, especially like with college wrestlers, Olympians, like, like yourself has a thought of your, like ever crossed your mind or where is an offer presented like uh, to follow the footsteps of other decorated wrestlers, like a Kurt Angle, Gable Steveson, Brock Lesnar, and going to professional wrestling? Ah, uh, well, if you look at those guys, I'm about all of their legs. My body is about their leg size. I know Gable. I know I've met Kurt Angle. I, I know Brock. Um, those are some big, big biscuits and big, big problems for me. So uh, growing up, I'm not going to lie to you. I was one of those kids with my brother with the cushions on the floor. We we're doing WWE all morning, all night. Right. Uh, <laughs> Love WWE. It was awesome. After growing up and, and getting into, you know, wrestling and then seeing my future, my size. Now, if I was a bigger, you know, I had a bigger frame, WWE would be no question. I would love to do so. But with my frame, I had to work with what's best for me. Uh, and that followed me into wrestling and now into MMA. And don't get me wrong. All of those guys, you see those guys, that they're, they're more than beasts. Right. So they can come from WWE probably into MMA. Um, but always, always we have a bunch of wrestlers like, uh, you know, Gable Stevenson. You have the older Stevenson, older, smaller Stevenson that's in the WWE as well. You got guys like Jacob Casper and Tracy Hancock. Right. So you're seeing all of these wrestlers start to transfer over, which is pretty cool because now not only do, you know, 
I already love to watch it. Now I get to watch some of my friends, you know, partaking. And so it, it's sweet, but it just wasn't the route for me. That's great. Uh, maybe one day, you never know, they might need somebody to come and uh, give them some backup. Maybe they'll call you up and oh, you can join I would, in. <laughs> I would love it. You throw a mask on me, I'll be Rey Mysterio too. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'll do the small figure, give me some cool obstacles and stunts to do, jumping off cages and stuff. And I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> no problem. But you tell That's me great. to wrestle somebody like Gable Stevenson, no way. I'll sit on the outside and just watch as a fan. That's good. And also just saw your jersey right there, Juventus. Uh, I'm a big UV uh, fan. Uh, are you a fan of Juventus too? Yeah. I got I got a whole bunch of their jerseys, but this is one of my favorite. Obviously, this was like a special release. Uh so I try to collect them. I just actually ordered my I got I had to get the messy jersey. The messy yeah. so and I gotta go and watch them. So we're only 40 minutes from Miami. So I'm like, listen, when I get back from my debut. I'm going to catch Messi at a soccer game. It's almost like you have to, right? It's almost like going to watch Michael Jordan play with the Bulls. I agree. Uh, I'm a little envious here. you got Messi coming in. So hopefully next year when he comes up to Toronto, I can see that. But uh, Jordan, before uh, we wrap up here and let you go, how can our listeners and viewers here at Vibe 105 uh, stay up to date with everything you're doing and follow you on social media? Uh, you can follow me at Instagram at that dude J O as well as Twitter will be that dude J O, but that underscore dude underscore J O. Um, I have both of those and I do have Facebook, not on there as much. So most of the time you're going to follow me through Instagram or Twitter. I'll be posting um, from today all the way up to the fight and past the fight, just my whole process and the journey of my, uh, MMA career. So hopefully you guys can join and hopefully I can give you some content that you like. Highly recommend that follow and Jordan, I really appreciate you sharing your time and coming on here on Vibe 105 to talk all about your debut here. And I wish you all the best in this, especially now that looks like you're a Juve fan. So uh, I'm going to be ruined for you there. Thanks a lot. Man. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time and, you know, just getting to chat about my debut and, you know, the process leading into it. So um, look forward to coming back on here after I secure a win and maybe I can hunt you down a little Vuve shirt. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Man. Live talks exclusively on Live 105.